Firstly, I'd just like to acknowledge all the special guests um, here at the conference today. Uh, as Dan said, um, Jared's on the other side of the world, so I'd just like to put in apologies for him. Uh, he and our whole marketing team are in the UK and the Europe, unfortunately, over this month, basically working on a number of the issues that have been discussed in the last 24 hours here today. But you won't have to listen to me all the time. We've got a video um, that just shows some of the activities and the conversations that have been happening um, in Europe in the last couple of weeks. So this morning I'd like to um, talk on behalf of First Light Venison. This is a company that's 50% owned by the supplying farmers. It combines the breeders, the breeder finishers and specialist finishers together. They work as a team to supply young premium venison uh, to premium customers in key markets around the world, uh, basically all year round. And from First Light Venison we have Gus, um, who you heard from yesterday with the Next Generation group, and also one of our farmer directors, uh, Tim Aitken, who's well known to you all. So although the bar does keep changing, the farmers, the company and the farmers have a very clear vision and that is to be the most profitable and sustainable pastoral farming system in New Zealand. Uh, at the moment, it would be fair to say that this is an aspirational goal, vision, but it's a vision that is the first reference point every time the farmers and the directors get together. It's in their face all the time. So have we achieved this? No. And what are, what are we doing to work towards this then? So obviously there's a number of factors that are important to achieving this vision and these are the areas that we're focusing on on First Light Venison. We call it the First Light, sorry I keep hitting that, I'll put it down. The First Light Jigsaw. I'm so, sure someone could draw a nice supply chain or someone can draw a circle for it but then we'll have arguments about what goes at the top and what goes at the bottom so we've called it a jigsaw. Avoided the um, arguments. Just on a couple of these things, um, one of the items up there is a value sheet. Um, we now, this is the name that we give for our yield measurement and payment system to the farmers within the group. We're now able to report to the farmer on an individual carcass basis the production and the value of five key areas of the carcass for us. The middles, the legs, the shoulders, the tail, and where applicable, the pizzle. And this is now um, used to calculate the overall value of the carcass. While for some of our farmers it's fair to say it's a bit of an information overload, um, it does create the basis for us to move forward in a couple of areas. Quality of stock at slaughter, namely uh, condition and weight, and the direction of the genetics um, both in our programme and what farmers are using within the group. The influence over the genetics is very much in the early stage of analysis, but at least now we and the farmers have got the information there starting to come through, and that'll be able to start supporting future decisions. The next generation, um, obviously topical yesterday, just like to reinforce the importance um, of our next generation of deer farmers coming through and commend the initiative that um, DINs have taken in this area. It's an area that First Light and the farmers themselves um, have also recognised and we're pleased to support the next next generation um, with our Lincoln scholarships as Gus mentioned yesterday. But as um, Sam said yesterday, it's the profitability of deer farming that will be the key driver to the success of this programme. Uh, commitment, that was a question from the floor yesterday um, about the level of commitments required. Um, being part of First Light Venison is um, about being part of a committed team and we do aim for uh, three year commitments at both ends of the value chain. Why is this level on tent, um, I guess, relatively long? It takes time to build new markets with new premiums and customers want to know that if they start down this programme, is that going to be there tomorrow? The other aspect of developing these premium chilled markets is also a year round um, supply pattern. It might not be completely even during the year, but it certainly can't just occur in three months of the year. As I mentioned earlier, the bar keeps rising. Um, First Light Venison's always had a relatively large focus away from Europe, and this has been predominantly into uh, chilled into the UK retail scene. And in the last 12 to 24 months, it's also been new markets into Canada and developing it into the Middle East as well. But there's always need for improvement, and for First Light Venison to be successful, the industry also needs to be successful. 
Over the last um, day, we've heard about the Savena brand activity in Europe, so in conjunction with DINs and the other four processor marketer companies, First Light would like to show a video that shows the work and the types of conversations that are occurring in Europe now. This is an example of a First Light initiative that has been supported by DINs. It involves a customer called Hanos, and it takes venison both from First Light Foods and Silver Fern Farms. But I understand all of our other companies have um, helped make this happen. So although Harness is an existing customer, it is all about new product and a new supply period. It's an example of what the industry will be looking to duplicate um, in new markets and other areas around the world. Thank you. For the last couple of years, we had this idea, uh, most of all it was a question, why do we sell New Zealand venison only during game season? That's a good question because it's, uh, it's farmed red deer, so it should be sold 12 months a year. We have had a good thought and uh, made a plan how we could uh, introduce this, this meat for, for 12 months onto the menu of the restaurants. It's only a, a matter of, of promotion. And, and showing the, the chefs uh, the possibilities of the meat. Europe is ready to start to embrace venison outside of a game season. And that doesn't have to be as game meat. 20 years or so I've been travelling to Europe on a regular basis, doing promotions around New Zealand farm venison, extolling the virtues of our farm product as opposed to the wild product. Um, the fact that it's farm raised naturally, antibiotic free and growth promoting free. But what I have noticed in the last few years is a little bit of a change because I think since the global economic meltdown we've seen chefs looking for products that will give them an edge on the menu without costing a huge amount of money. We've got a high valued product in the venison. So we're looking for discerning customers now who actually care about the type of food they eat. They'd actually care that this is ethically grown, that it's raised on natural pastures, no antibiotics, hormone free. People want to know what they are buying and they want products with a story. And I think the story that we could tell about New Zealand venison is the story of the young generation consuming. The right moment ever would be now because during summertime a lot of restaurants would uh, put ostrich on their menu or uh, antelope meat. In the past we have had eight different um, species of, of antelope and it's all gone. It's not available fresh. From that point of view it is more than welcome to have a new product uh, on the menu for our, our, our customers during summertime. Juicy meat, free range meat, 100% traceable. It has all the USPs to make a success. There are so many attributes that we've got with venison that can suit such a wide spectrum of people. But I think more and more so that we're going into an era where we have got discerning customers that actually really care about the food that they put into their body. And venison ticks all those boxes. Our meat, in terms of the cost on paper, looks much more favourable. But even apart from that, venison, the way it yields out, the way that you can get so much use out of a piece of meat because there's no fat. And it really goes a long way. You can make beautiful portions, lesser cost. The centre of plate cost, or the cost of the protein on the middle of the plate, is the, is the important thing. So that can be kept to a minimum with venison because you don't have to use a lot. And we know that through our experience that it's only a matter of getting them to taste it because it is a beautiful meat. And once they've tried it, they go, wow, that is different. And it is so different from wild venison. I think it's a very nice product. It's a very pure product. Uh, it's light. You can uh, mix it up with a lot of herbs and a lot of spices, a lot of it because the taste is very all the year the same. And wild venison is not easy to use, just uh, skinny, 
It's not fat. It is, uh, yeah, you can use it all the, all the year. It's much iron in it. It's good for, the, for, the, for your life. Because it's not a strong taste, it's very delicate. So you can use it in lots of forms on your menu. Just like, yeah, biological. We have now guests uh, to come to our uh, restaurant to eat deer on this time. I have uh, done my menu with coffee and curry and a lot of herbs from the season and uh, yeah, the, the guests are very enthusiastic. I think when more chefs uh, put it on a menu in the summer it com becomes more easy. We have completely to forget the word uh, game. What today the market is asking is traceability. They want to know where is the animal coming from, what is the story for the animal, how is it transported, uh, what happens from, from the beginning till the end. We have animal welfare, we have young animals guaranteed, and we have a free range and slaughtered product, not hunted product. It's easy to handle, you can do barbecue, you can do uh, wok menus. It's a variety of products you can use from venison. We are positive, we have a lot of ideas, we have the energy. I was with Ben in New Zealand uh, two months ago. We got so much inspiration, information, and it was so good to talk with farmers. Try to be one big chain to attack uh, and achieve the goal that you want to make. Our role and drive, I guess, as marketers and exporters of New Zealand farm venison is to, to return the best possible value we can back to the producers of this fantastic product that we grow. From the hearts of the deer farmers, of which I am one, this summer season business is very important for us. It's just changing the attitude of the diner. Let's all join together and make it a success. Both.